you think about Chernobyl disaster, you probably imagine some pictures like it was hell on earth. If yes, you are not exactly wrong, as it was terrible for all the people living and working there. And also for many others, like the liquidators who were trying to deal with the outcome of the event. People living in the area surrounding the power plant were relocated and they often never got a chance to even see that place again. I don't want to say it was fair. It wasn't. But to be honest, they should be moved from there sooner than the Soviet Union decided, but it was all politics. Radiation isn't called one of the silent killers without reason. On the other hand, it seems like the scientists overcalculated the damage that even did. Of course, the work of the liquidators and the construction of the two sarcophaguses were extremely important. If I may say that, they work greatly minimized the negative outcome of the disaster. If you watched one of our previous videos, the one about radiation in Chernobyl, you might remember that I said back then that the zone is now home to many animals, including some that are considered endangered species. So you may ask, if the radiation was so bad back then, possibly still is in some particular areas of the zone, why did those animals decide to live there. Isn't that dangerous to them? Aren't they dying too soon to have offspring? And if they don't, isn't the radiation too high for the young ones to avoid developing cancer or some genetic flaws? Well, to answer it shortly, it's actually pretty safe there. Besides, the radiation level itself is greatly exaggerated nowadays, thanks to more gossip and panic than actual research and knowledge. As you may know from one of our previous videos, there is one very important factor that many people don't think of. People. Have you ever watched the movie I Am Legend with Will Smith? I love it. And one of the reasons I do is how they pictured a destroyed New York. But there are some scenes where the main character hunts animals that are roaming the streets. And that's actually pretty accurate if you think about the city in that movie. It was completely abandoned. Well, okay, there are some creatures living there, still, thanks to the contagious virus, but the days are pretty quiet. No traffic, no humans left. The city was slowly overtaken by nature. Plants, of course but also animals, including those that escaped from the local zoo. If you think about it, the vision of the creators of I Am Legend isn't that far from what happened in Chernobyl and its surrounding areas in those years after the disaster. There is still a small community of people living there and also some military presence to guard the place too, but nonetheless, it's fairly calm and quiet. And it's not exactly like any person showing up there would go for a walk to pick up some mushrooms or wander through the woods on a daily basis. There is one word that explains why animals are feeling there as it's their asylum peacefulness. They are literally left just by themselves. Nobody is harassing them and they can live way better than they would in some other, even larger woods or areas in Ukraine or any other country. And it's not like they just popped out in the zone. After the few first years after the disaster, when the number of liquidators and the cleaning up works around the power plant and surrounding areas was dropping, the animals started to appear there, and they didn't plan to leave. The Ukrainian and Belarusian researchers recorded hundreds of plants and animal species, even including over 60 rare ones. To name a few, if you would find yourself in the zone today, you could meet a lynx, a fox, a deer, a wolf, a dog, a Przewalski horse, a black bear, a black stork, and even a European bison. And don't even get me started there. I could make you a whole list of different animals there. But even if the radiation levels are fairly normal in the most parts of the zone, isn't there still a risk that those animals would acquire some dangerous doses? Well, yes, of course, it happens. But if you think of how radiation impacted the animals in general, I could say not especially much. There is a lot of scientific evidence that there are more genetic mutations within the animals living in the zone, but let's check one of the papers I have found. It sums up the studies on freshwater animals, focusing on the ones living in the lakes close to Chernobyl. Over the time of a few decades, they have more genetic mutations overall than the same ones living farther away. The researchers gave an example of crustaceans and found out that there was greater genetic diversity in the populations exposed to the highest radiation dose rates 
following the accident in 1986. One of the conclusions they have made is however large immediate doses of ionizing radiation are very dangerous, the lower levels are not nearly as bad as the scientific community expected decades ago. But don't get me wrong, animals living there are exposed to radiation. If they don't accidentally get into the very irradiated area, they usually get some small doses, but still higher than normal. So technically speaking, they are mutants. But hold your horses there. You won't see any two-headed Brahmins like in Fallout New Vegas. But scientists have noted many different genetic changes in most of the organisms affected by the Chernobyl disaster. If you look up the research published in 2001, the study showed that the genetic mutation number increased by a factor of 20. The more intriguing thing is that we don't exactly know what these mutations did. We just know that they appeared, but further research is needed to tell if they are negative, neutral or maybe even positive. We just can't tell how they impacted the reproduction rates, the genetic diversity or other important survival factors. And the sad part is what Dr. Ault said about the results I've mentioned earlier. Quoting, many of the animals around Chernobyl have actually done very well, because the humans left. And it turns out, we are way worse than radiation. And that's true, no matter how bad it sounds. It's estimated that nowadays the number of bears and wolves in the zone outnumbers the people population there, including soldiers. Brown bears, wolves, lynx, bison, deer, moose, beavers, foxes, badgers, wild boars, raccoons, dogs, and more than 200 species of birds have made the zone their home. It consists of a very interesting ecosystem that is accompanied by a variety of amphibians, fish, worms and even bacteria. The absence of humans is what lets them live… well, don't joke ourselves, a better life there. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's the first part of another subject we wanted to introduce to our Chernobyl Stories series. And it's important one for us because we were there, in the zone, many times. We've not only seen many animals, but we had sometimes the chance to take a photo of them or even a video. And yes, we'll continue this subject in the future, but I think it's enough for an entry-level episode. Not too much at once. Check out our previous videos, especially the whole playlist called Chernobyl Stories. You can find a dozen of materials about the Chernobyl disaster, its effects, the people behind it, and even more. Take care and see you next week, guys.